Um, first, what I'm going to do is give you a brief introduction of the reading section, okay? And um, help you understand what you need to do, okay? In the reading section, um, we have five tasks that we will need to do, five type of tasks, all right? So we have fill in the blanks. We have MCQ single, MCQ multiple, fill a read a paragraph, fill in the blanks reading and fill in the blanks reading and writing, all right? So these are the five types of things that we need to do in the, in the reading section, all right? Now, in the reading section, time management is not automated like, it's, like it is in speaking and in writing. All right, so time management is on you guys. So what does that mean? For the whole reading section, you will be given between 32 to 41 minutes to answer between 16 to 20, it says, but generally it's between 15 to 20, all right? Now, just for the sake of understanding, if it's 15 questions, then suppose I get 32 minutes, how many minutes should I, do I get generally per question? Oh, Almost two. Almost two, a bit more than two, but let's let's put that at you know exactly two minutes. Okay, so that means um I need to spend roughly about two minutes per question. That's just to make sure that I'm able to answer all the questions on time. Yeah, understood. Because if I don't maintain that timeline, the problem, the issue is going to be that I won't be able to finish the questions in my reading section. Why? As I said again, the reading section time management is on you. So if you don't do the top proper time management, you will have issues of finishing the whole section. Understood? Okay. So what yeah. we need to do is spend more five minutes, uh, sorry, two minutes per question, and then click next to go to the next question. If I don't do that, can I just sit in one question for the rest of 32 minutes? No. Yeah, but uh, like, think about it. If I don't click next, will it take me automatically to the next question? Nope. Yeah. No, so it will not take you. That's the whole point. You need to manage that. So you have to click next to go to the next question. All right. Unlike in speaking and writing, once the time expires, it automatically takes you to the next question. Here, it doesn't. Okay, because it's a, the timing is for the whole section. All right. So now, obviously, there are certain tasks that are more important than certain other tasks. Okay. So these are the tasks that we have, right? So here I have given a breakdown for you guys to understand. So in MCQ single, I can get between two to three questions, right? For MCQ multiple, same thing, two to, uh, two to three questions. For reorder paragraph, two to three questions. Fill in the blanks reading, four to five questions. And fill in the blanks reading and writing, five to six questions. Now, on the middle column, you see that it's marks per question. That means for MCQ single, Per question, I'm getting how many marks? One. One mark. One mark, right? And total marks I can get from MCQ singles? Two to three more. Two to three, right? Now, suppose I'm spending two minutes on my MCQs. How many marks can I get per question? One. One. If I spend two minutes on my fill in the blanks reading and writing, how many marks am I getting? Five to six. Five to six. Now, mm. between these two, which one seems more important? Reading the blanks, reading and writing. Yeah, right, right. Blank. So, so can, should I spend two minutes over here as well as over here? No. 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 You should spend more time here because this is the one that is contributing higher marks as opposed to this one. All right. So like that, if you see that there are three tasks in the reading section that are more important. So which are those three tasks? Fill in the blanks. Fill yeah. in the blanks, reading and writing. Reading and reorder. And reorder. Right. Re when we do fill a reading section, these are the three things we should focus more on. That means we need to manage the time properly over here rather than here. Now, as a result, I'm going to give you a guideline on how many seconds or minutes per question you should be spending. All right. So generally for MCQ single, don't spend more than one and a half minute maximum. All right. If I can't answer within one and a half minute, I'll just make one. Uh, I'll just one select one answer and go to the next question. For MCQ multiple, do not select. Do not go over two minutes max. Reorders you should be taking between two to three minutes. Fill in the blanks reading not more than two minutes. Fill in the blanks reading and writing two and a half minutes. All right, maximum. 
Now, again, this is a guideline. Understand this. Do, don't go by word by word, all right? If suppose one uh, blanks took me one minute to do, I'm not going to sit there for two minutes, will I? No. Yeah. <laughs> so again, you'll see that some questions are a bit lengthier as opposed to other questions. So the reading section is a bit dynamic. So the time you spend on each question can change. Okay. But this is a general guideline for you guys to have an idea. Okay, what should I spend more time on? And what should I spend less time on? All right? Yeah. Okay. Now, so there are two types of fill in the blanks, right? One is fill in the blanks reading and writing, and one is fill in the blanks reading. So our focus is today on these two things, right? So let's just quickly differentiate, um, like identify the differences between these two tasks, right? So first one is fill in the blanks reading and writing. Now, fill in, in fill in the blanks reading and writing, what happens is that you get a paragraph and in the blanks, you see that there's a drop down menu, right? You click on that drop down menu and it op opens up to four options. So per blank, how many options am I getting? Four. 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 And you need to select from there. So this is referred mm -hmm. to as a drop down or a select fill in the blanks. Got it? So fill in the blanks, mm -hmm. reading and writing is called drop down. That's good. Whereas mm -hmm. on the other hand, fill in the blanks reading is referred to as a drag and drop. So what happens in this one is that you will be given the paragraph and there are blanks that appear there. All the options will be provided at the bottom. Your job is to drag them and drop it at the correct box. All right. This is referred to as drag and drop. Got it? Mm -hmm. So fill in the blanks reading and writing is called drop down. Fill in the blanks reading is called drag and drop. Got it? So the difference between mm -hmm. those two are obviously aesthetically, they look different. And the other thing is in, in here, per blanks, how many options am I getting? Four. Four. In here, number of op blanks plus three is your option. So suppose I get four blanks. How many options will I get in total? Seven. 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 All right. If I get five blanks, how many options will I get? Eight. Eight. Understood? So whatever the number of options, uh, sorry, blanks plus three is your option. All right. So that means that always after answering this fill in the blanks, how many extra words will be here? Here. Three. Three. Okay. All right. So those are the very generic, like very general differences. Okay. Now the other difference, the other difference is that fill in the blanks reading is dependent on grammar. You see, so grades depend on for fill in the blanks reading is grammar. Whereas for reading and writing, grammar is not that important. For reading, vocabulary is important, but in here, vocabulary is more important. Got it? Over here, collocations are not important, but for reading and writing, collocations are the most important thing. What does collocation mean? Good question. That takes me to the next slide. Okay. So collocation, any idea? Okay. Let's general question. Anyone know? Anyone knows what are, coll what are collocations? Any idea? Okay. Collocations are two words that are always and often used together. Two words that are always used together. Okay. So it can be two or more. Some Mostly it's two words, but it also can be two or more. Any idea? What are those words? Can anyone give me an example? Like what academic world. Yep, sorry. Academic world, academic work. Academic work, yeah. But like, let's talk about in general terms, right? Rather than looking at something difficult, let's, let's focus on easy and then we will jump into a bit more complicated things, all right? So let, let's think about what is the easiest collocation or the most common collocation? When you see School someone- uniform. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. But when you see someone, what, what is the first thing you say to them? 
depending on which Hi. time of the day you see them what do you say greetings good, good afternoon yeah good evening good afternoon good morning right those are two separate words that are always used together that's a collocation got it suppose i say blonde what is a word that goes with blonde hair blonde hair there you go that's a collocation right then same thing strong coffee heavy rain these are called collocation that means two or more words that are always used together now the thing about collocation is it is dependent on your what is it dependent on vocabulary yeah it's dependent no. on your vocabulary now the problem with that being is that vocabulary is not something that you can pick up based on a trick all right so suppose i get i tell you all oh, the trick to picking up vocabulary is just reading is that really a trick yeah not really right so vocabulary improving your vocabulary is not something can we do this overnight can i improve my mm. vocabulary overnight no 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 there is no but on the other hand grammar are set of rules right mm -hmm. as long as if i know the rules or if i practice or memorize the rules will i be able to improve my grammar yeah 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 so grammar are generally rules and if i know the rules that means i know the boundaries and that means i can answer questions easy or easily whereas on the other hand with vocabulary it's something that i need to practice to improve right now that brings us to the main point that whenever we doing fill in the blanks reading and writing it is dependent on collocations and in order to improve collocations the only way i can improve is i need to improve my vocabulary we are going to change our focus to grammar now we are going to go through three things okay and i'll break them down to you guys so that you understand them easily all right but here from here onwards i want everyone to pay attention and please take notes because i know you guys day after tomorrow you're going to look at these things and your nothing will register in your head if you don't take notes okay yes guys no no yes yep yep oh yep yeah So the first thing we are going to look at is something called ah basic sentence construction. Any idea what is that? What is structure? Uh, object. like yeah subject object verb noun adjective everything subject verb agreement yeah well we'll come back to that that's separate okay so oh, okay verb plus what is it object object okay now object. now if i just leave it up to here does this make sense no yeah so why are you giving me this answer <laughs> yeah that's that i know it's subject verb object what does it mean Huh? because we don't know what it means right so i want i don't want you guys to memorize this i want you to understand this all right so next time if i ask you what is a basic sentence construction you're not going to say subject verb object yes you're right it's subject verb object but what does that mean it's no it means that in order for your sentence to be meaningful you need a subject that's it yeah a verb and object yeah now what is a subject that does the action app yeah, good is the doer of the action what is the verb the action. action what is the object on which the action is done And check this okay so 
What's the subject? John. John. What is the action? John. Place. 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 What's the object? Footy. Footy. Got it. Subject, verb, and object. Okay. So in order for a sentence to be meaningful, I need a subject, I need an object, and I need a verb. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever we are looking at subject, verb, object, it's important to understand one thing. The subject is someone or something, right? Because they, they're doing the action. So it can be someone or something. Same thing as object, someone or something, right? So All right, so OB teachers can. What's the subject? OB. OB. Yeah. Verb is? Teachers. Teachers and Teachers. object. Can. Yeah. Now, it's someone or something, do you see, always? So the subject is what part of speech? What is OB? Subject. Okay. Yeah, so what part of speech is this? Okay. It's a verb. It's an ob uh, it's an adjective. Is it it's a, a subject? Yeah, so what is a subject? OB. OB. It's a name. Name is what? Yeah. Noun. Noun. A noun. Right? Object is who what? Noun. 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 So remember noun. that. A subject, an object, must always be a no. noun. It cannot make sense if it's not. Now, let's have a look. So, John over here is a noun. Footy over here is a noun, right? Because it's something. It's a thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. right? John is someone, so it's a noun. Now, let's look at this. What is the subject here? John. What is the verb here? Any idea what type of verb is is? It's called a helping, helping verb. verb. Okay. So they are referred to as helping verbs. So was, is, are, has, have, these things are referred to as a helping, helping verb. verb. Got it? So John is intelligent. Now, what is the object? Intelligent. Now, generally, yeah, if it's intelligent, that means it's the receiver of an action, right? Yeah. 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 Is intelligence no. receiving anything? No. 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 So is this an object? No, it's an adverb. It's an adjective. adjective. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Don't worry about that. But for the sake of this argument, we know that this is an adjective because it is describing John. Yeah. So do we have any object in this sentence? No. Can an object be an adjective? Object, can it be an adjective? Yes. Yes. What did I say? A subject is what? No. An object is what? No. No. So why are you saying? Oh, that an object can be an adjective, right? Remember, it's a receiver of the action or someone or something is intelligent something or someone. Is it a thing or someone? Thing. Someone. Intelligent. The no, word intelligent, nothing. is it it's someone nothing. or something? It's not, it's, it's no. just a description, yep. all right? So I don't have any object in here. So that means I can have a sentence without an object, all right? So yep. this is called a modifier. 
intelligent is called a modifier. All right. Next thing. Oops, sorry. Next thing. So, what is the action over here? Go. Go. What is the receiver here? Home. Or object. No. Object. Object Home. is receiving the action, right? If I say go, go where? Home. 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 So object is. Home. Receiver of the action. In this. Do you have any subject in this? You. Yeah, but is it mentioned over here? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's called implied subject, right? But you see that my sentence is still making sense, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that means that a subject, a sentence can be without a subject. A sentence can also be without an object. Yeah. Object, but a sentence will never make sense without what verb without a verb good a sentence without a verb is called not a sentence <laughs> good answer without a sentence is a sentence without a sentence wow brilliant <laughs> Sentence without a verb is called, any idea? When you just randomly group two, three words together, what do you call them? Phrase. Phrase. Okay. So sentence without a verb is called a phrase. Okay. So why are we learning this? The reason why we're learning this is because suppose I'm reading a sentence, all right? And the sentence is not making sense. Something is missing from that sentence. What is missing then? Well, verb. A verb. That means in my blanks, in my options, what should I be looking for? Verb. verb. So, for example, if in here, instead of place, I put John dash footy. Does it make sense at all? No. Nope. No. Okay. So that means an action is missing. Suppose if an object is missing, but the verb is given in the sentence. Is the sentence making sense? No. Do no. I know what do I know what, what is happening? No. John is playing. What? John, John is playing, is playing. right? Yeah. John, John is playing. Is playing. So yeah. it, it, the sentence is still making sense, but there's something missing from it. Missing. Yeah. But the sentence is still making sense. John plays. Mm -hmm. He can play something, but I know what John is doing. Do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm looking for an object or mm -hmm. a noun. A noun. Right? Yeah. So that means in my blank, I should be looking for a noun. Got a it? Noun. Same thing. If I if say it says dash place footy. Okay. I know that it's making sense. I just need to find someone or something there to go. Mm -hmm. Got it? But when the blank verb is missing, it, it can be anything, right? It can be eat footy, play footy, dance footy, any of that. But I don't know exactly what that sentence is trying to say. Understand? So at that time, I'm looking for a verb. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we are looking at this. All right, structure. Now we are going to jump into the subject verb agreement. Now this is the single most important thing that you're going to come across, all right? The single most important thing you're going to come across. So this applies everywhere. It applies to your write from dictation, repeat sentences, anywhere you talk about, and it is going to be there, all right? And this is something that you need to know right now in order to make sure that you're not making grammar mistakes in your exam, all right? So a lot of you will see that you have a problem with repeat sentences and you can't identify which word is singular, which one is plural. This is where it will become very clear. All right, so question, what is a subject-verb agreement? Rule. 
There's a rule. Yeah. What is the rule? Any idea? Now the rule is that my subject must agree with my verb. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a simple version of it. What is what what is your understanding of a plural word? Many, like more yeah. than one. Yeah, but how do I understand that? With what what do I look in a word to help me understand a plural word? S. S or S or E S. Yes. Right. So generally, the rule is when my subject is singular, my verb should be. Any idea? Plural. Okay. So let's go back to the sentence. Is this sentence correct? No. Why not? Because it doesn't make sense. What's the issue? Place. It should be place. place. Why place? No, should be place. My subject is a singular or plural? Singular. 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 My verb should be. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. If it is more safe. What? Play. All right. Got it? Doesn't matter whether it's boys or not. Nah. They, they play or play. they play? They play. They play. She play or she plays? She plays. Got it? So that's what we refer to as a subject verb agreement. Okay. Is it clear, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, sounds very easy, right? Sounds easy. Yeah. yeah. Let's make your life a little more complicated than that, right? Because <laughs> that's my um, job here. I'm going to make your life a little more complicated. <laughs> so let's have a look at this sentence, all right? So let's look at the first one. Dine. Teacher, along with the students. Sorry. Dine. 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 Okay, let's look at dine. this first. Okay. Dine. The teachers, dine. along with the students, dine or dines at the cafeteria. Dine. 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 Suppose I take this one out. The teachers, along with the student, dine or dines at the cafeteria. Dine. 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 Oh, no, dine. 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 Right. Dine. Now, dine. See, here, what is the subject here, guys? The teachers. Teachers. Yeah. I mean, so, along with the students, it's nothing. It's just an additional information. It's not going to change my subject. And my verb agreement. So it should be dine. So what should it be? Dine. Yep. So does it matter whether I change this to student or students? No. It doesn't matter. If this is students, would this still be dine or dines? Dine. 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 Because the subject teachers. is teachers. Plural. So it will only change when I change the subject. Did. Now, dines. Okay, the teacher along with the students dines at the cafeteria. cafeteria. Now, this is one of the most common mistakes students make. All right, why? 
because you always think that the verb and the subject is close to each other understand no. it is important that you need to know identify the subject first because there might be additional information in between okay and this results in a lot of mistakes it doesn't matter whether this is student or students this will always reflect this here what is mentioned <clears throat> here why let's take this sentence out for example let's now this is this sentence still making sense now tell me what is the answer thanks thanks at the cafeteria along with the students now whether it's along with the student or students does it matter not at all because you see that this is not part of my subject got it yeah yep now let's do something a bit different <laughs> Teachers dine. and the students, dine or dine at the cafeteria? Dine. Dine at the cafeteria? Good. Dine. Suppose I change this. The teacher and the students, dine or dines at the cafeteria? Dines. Dines. It's still dine. Hmm? It is still dine. Why? Mm. Because and is the only exception where it compounds your subject. So and makes your subject plural. Okay. How come? Okay. Let's apply uh, the yeah, same yeah, logic. Yeah. Uh, let's apply yeah, the yeah. same logic as we did with along with. Okay. Does this sentence make sense? No. No. Why? Because and that student is part of your subject because otherwise it would have made sense the same way it did the last one wouldn't it yeah got it so oh, so mm -hmm. me like if there is and in the sentence we need to change the form of the verb like if it yeah. is times it then dine if it is time then it's time yeah generally that should be the case so look at this now what the teacher and the student dine or dines at the cafeteria dine Right. It's still dying. Why? Because there are multiple things. It doesn't no, matter. Definitely. It's one teacher and one student. Are they plural or singular? Plural. Singular. They, but together. They are together. Remember oh, that? Okay. Yeah. Plural. So it's still plural. Got it? So whether I have S over here or S over here or no S over here, no S over here, my subject is still what? Yeah. Plural. Plural. So my verb should be. Thank you. Got it. Is it clear, guys? Yeah. All right. Please understand this because this is really, really important. All right. Why are we looking at this? This is one thing that will help you a lot. So suppose I'm looking for a verb in my blank based on this sentence. Am I going to have a singular word, a singular verb, or a plural verb? Singular. Singular. Singular, right? That means any word that has ES or an S, will I even look at them? No. Any word no. that is has ES or S, will I look at them? No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, same thing. If I... Take this out. What type of verb am I looking for? Singular or plural? Plural. plural? Plural. That means I'm looking for plural words. That means S or ES must be in my word. Any word with S or ES is my only consideration. So that when I'm looking at my options, will I look at any word that does not have S or ES? No. 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 You're only going to look at the words with S or and ES. So that means you'll see that there are only two or one option. Immediately, you know, that's your answer, even though if you don't make sense, because that's the only way it will go in there. Understood? Yep. Yeah. All right. 
Let's look at the next one. A pack of gums give or gives minty fresh breath. Gives. Give. A pack of gums give or gives. Give. Give. Gives. 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 Because it's singular. Pack. Why pack. is it singular? Because it's a one. Again, do you notice this 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 thing that I've been telling you about? Look at the subject mm. first. The subject is a not pack. gums. It's a pack. A pack. Okay. If I change this, if I said gums, give, give, give and then fresh bread, give. got it. But our pack changes my discussion because, yeah, because I'm referring to one pack. Understood, guys? Yeah. Yep. All right. And you see that a lot of you are making this mistake. So that means that in the exam, this is the same thing is happening. And this is where you're losing marks for grammar. Just be very mindful that that computer picks it up immediately when you do this. Mm. All right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, the only exception we use when we are adding a connector is and. Remember that. And compounds a subject. So he and she is going to the party or are going to the party. Now that brings us to an interesting question, right? We have been looking at main verb. What about helping verb? <laughs> right? So for helping verb, the rule is opposite. The rule is if my subject is singular, my helping verb should also be singular. So she are smart or she is smart? She is. She wow. is. Why? Because my verb, my subject is she. Singular. My helping verb should also be singular. Singular. So here, a pack of gums are healthy or is healthy? Is healthy. Is healthy, is healthy right? So you get the idea that for helping verb, the rule is that my subject and my verb should have the same form. Is it clear? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So be mindful of that. All right, let's now look at some exceptions, all right? Now, the most common thing is something we refer to as a collective noun. Anyone knows what a collective noun is? Guys, what is a collective noun? Um, collection of things. Okay. So a person, what is a collective noun of a person? People. People. Right. So collective noun refers to what? Multiple of that subject. Multiple. Okay. So a person is singular or plural? Singular. singular singular and people singular or plural plural, plural. plural. so people makes mistake or people make mistake make mistake make mistake make. okay mistake. make people is referring to singular or plural 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 that means my verb should be make singular, yep. singular right got singular. it all right, now, um, just quickly, I'm gonna give you guys some just quick tips, all right? This is nothing, this is just basic knowledge. I just want you guys to enjoy the session a little bit as well. What is the collective noun for fish? What is the plural form of fish, by the way? Fishes? School of fish. fish. Good, school of fish, right? It's not fishes, there's no plural term for fish. Yeah, if you're right, fishes are in the sea, that's... <laughs> 
<laughs> Incorrect. Remember that you can't write fishes. Same thing. Information is it single or plural? Plural. It's always a plural. There's no singular word of information. Yeah. All right. So information is a plural. It's a group of collection of things that are provided to you. Got it. Um, what is a collective noun for deer? Can I say, is it a deer? What's the plural form of deer? Deers? Pack of deers? A pack of pack deer? Of deer? Or... Close. Not pack. Close. <sighs> Whenever it's referring to grazing animals, like that, those that are herbivores, herd. we refer oh. to them as herd. Good. Heard of deer or deers? Heard of deers. Deer. Deer. No deers. There's deer. deer. Yeah. So you see, like these are very important things. You know that, okay, like by a sense, there should be deers, but no, there's no plural form of deer. You have to just add that information in there. Okay. Same thing with lions. What's the plural form of a lion? Pack of lion. Uh-uh. Pack only refers to dogs, remember. So pack of wolves, okay. pack of dogs. All right. Lion is different. Yeah. It's the pride of lions. Right. Pride. Lion, yeah. collectively, they are known as pride. Okay. All right. So herd of sheep, herd of goats, herd of cows, those things are appropriate. Okay. So just remember these things because these are, when you're writing them down, and if you're writing them down incorrectly, you're going to lose marks for grammar. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right now let's look at the exceptions to the rule that we have learned all right so there are a few exceptions all right to the rules that we are learning so the subject verb agreement has few exceptions and the most common exceptions are referring to this one body thing okay so one body thing now, these three words have four variations. What are they? They're at the bottom. No one, nobody, no, nothing. Nothing. Then? Everyone, everybody. Everybody, everything. everything. Then? Someone, someone somebody, somebody, something. something. Anyone, anyone. Anybody. Anybody, anything. Now, when I say everyone, is it singular or plural? Plural. Plural. I'm including everyone, right? Yes. Yeah. So in a yep. sense, that word should be plural, but in English, it's treated as singular. Mm. So when we are saying the sentence, everyone is happy. Do I say everyone are happy? <laughs> yeah. Mm, you don't, all right? Doesn't sound right. Doesn't okay. sound <laughs> Yeah, that sounds wrong. Why? Because now you see that you already have that knowledge only because you've learned that gram part of grammar a long time ago. Now it's just coming back to you, right? So these are the exception words. They are, they are me meant to use as plural forms, but they are actually treated as what? Singular. Singular. So everyone make mistake or makes mistakes? Everyone makes makes everyone makes mistakes okay. why because everyone is being treated as singular singular good now because it's being treated as singular when i'm looking at helping verb what should be the helping verb everyone are mis uh, are making mistakes or everyone is making mistakes is is, is. is that clear guys yeah mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that applies to all of this. No one, nobody, no, nothing, everyone, everybody, everything, someone, somebody, something, anyone, anybody, anything. Okay. Uh, we never say no one are listening. No one is listening. Nobody want to talk or nobody wants to talk. One wants to talk, right? Because nobody, it is including everyone, but I'm still treating that as a singular. Singing. Word. Word. please remember these things all right because these are very common ones that you're going to get into the exam 
your sentences will be like that. You'll see that everyone, no one, something, these are always in your sentences. So just be careful. All right. Okay. Okay. The other ones, generally, we don't use that much, but I'm um, just going to give you just for the point of um, today's, you know, conversation to keep it interesting. So wearables, you know, things that we wear, generally, they are, there's no si single form of it. Can you give me an example? Watches. Watches. Anything else? What do you uh, What do you guys wear? Jewelry. Jewelries. Underwear. Underwears. Hmm. Pants. All right. So, socks, pants, shirts, skirts. All right. Um, T-shirts. There's no singular form of them. Jeans. What is the singular form of jeans? Any, is there any singular form of jeans? No. no. Okay. no. Jeans is a singular. Yeah, jeans is singular itself. What is the plural form? Pair of jeans. Pair of jeans. Same as your sunglasses. Is there a singular form of sunglass? No. Is there something called sunglass? No. no. It's always sunglasses. And again, the singular form of sunglasses is what? Pair sunglasses. of sunglasses. Yeah, pair oh, sorry, of. Sorry, the plural. Yeah, the pair, pair of sunglasses. Pair of. Same thing. Your pair of jeans. Pair of jeans means what? Singular or plural? Plural. But it's referring to your single one jeans. Okay. All right. Same thing as socks. Right. Singular pair. form of socks is pair of socks. Got it. All right. The, look, these are won't be like important, but I'm just giving you so that in a, in a conversation, if this is ever brought up, you know the correct way of speaking. We're going to look at his parts of speech. All right. Now, generally, any idea how many parts of speech we have? Eight. Eight. What are they? It's written. Most of them are written here. You can see it, right? Noun, adverb. Noun, adverb, verb, adjective, preposition. What else? Give me the other three. Proper noun. Proper noun is part of noun, so that's not a separate one. Conjunction. What are conjunctions? Any example? And. Good. So we call them what? Connect connectors. Connect. Yep. And moreover, however, those things. But yeah. Anything else? Pronoun. Pronoun we already. Yep. Good. And pronoun. Pronoun. what are pronouns, by the way? What are pronouns? He, Example. She, he, she, um, this, he. that. They are replacing a noun, right? Yeah. yeah. What are. What is the next one? Super. Mm. I'm going to write till this one. Give me the word. Interjunction. Interjections. Okay. Yes. So they are basically expressions like, oh my God, ouch, these things, all right? In the exam, you are only treated, you are only um, tested based on five, all right? So the five are those five, noun, Adverb, verb, adjective, and preposition. Now we are going to give an understanding of all of this, all right? So we are going to try and get an understanding of these things. Okay. So what is a noun? Noun is a? Name, name place, place, animal, things. Thing. 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 Okay. All right. Adverb is what? Adverb is a word that describes a? Verb. Verb, verb is a? Action word. Action word. Adjective is? Describe. Noun. Preposition is referring to time, manner, time. place, and position. So can you give me an example of preposition? By. At. Not at, but at. Yes. At. at in, on, off. Got it? Before, after. Yeah. 
So prepositions are very important nowadays, okay? Because your exams are, your questions are tested on prepositions. And the funny thing is they are so tricky. Yeah. All right. So, Can you repeat the preposition examples, sorry? So um, at, on, off, in, okay. okay? Before, like anything that is referring to time, manner, place, or position. I'll meet you in the lobby, okay? We will catch up at 6 p.m. All right? The book is on the table. Please meet me at the lobby, all right? So those things are referring to time, manner, position, or place, okay? So if I say the lecture is going to conduct after 6 p.m., preposition is Preposition is? After. After, yep, good, after, before. Now that changes too, based on um, certain expect, um, certain things. We'll explain that in a minute or two. Now, from here, if I can figure out two things, if I can figure out two things from here, I can figure out the rest of the thing, okay? Yep. So what are the two things that I need to figure out to figure out the rest of them? Noun and verb. Yep, noun and verb. If I figure out mm -hmm. noun, what can I figure out? Adjective. Adjective, because an adjective will never survive without a no. noun. Remember that. If I don't have a noun, I cannot have an adjective. Clear? The whole yeah. purpose of an adjective is to describe a noun. Adverb is also a modifier. The whole purpose of an adverb is to describe something. So whenever there's an adverb, there must be other things as well. Right, so generally adverb describes a verb so that if you figure out the verb, you can figure out the adverb. If you figure out a noun, you can figure out the adjective. Then what is remaining? Preposition. So how, if I figure out two things, how can I figure out the other, uh, how can I figure out preposition? What is connected with preposition? Well, preposition is connected to what? Well, okay, give me a sentence. Give me a sentence with preposition. Simple, don't, don't complicate your life. Think about something very simple. Meet me at the lobby. Me, okay. smart guy, taking my <laughs> one, yeah? He's my <laughs> one, yeah. Meet you me. said simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I shouldn't have given you that example before. I didn't notice <laughs> my students are you're going to use my example on me. Meet me at the, good, no. well done, all right. All right, meet me at the lobby. The book is Just on, on the, the table. table on the okay. table. All right, so. What does pre mean? Before. Before. What is position? Position of that word. Yeah, but what is a position? If I, if I say position, what does that word itself, what part of speech is position? Place. It's a place. Place no. is what? No. No. Now, no. that means my preposition should always sit before what? No. no. At the lobby. On the Got it? So yep. if I have a preposition, it must be followed by a? No. No. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, that means I just need to figure out two things to figure out the rest of them. Now, generally, how do I easily figure out noun? Okay. The best way to figure out a noun, and this is an interesting one, all right? So we missed out on one thing today. In the American English, there are nine parts of speech. Any idea what is the other one? Any idea which one is the additional one? What are these things? Both. A and the, what Both. do we call them? 
articles articles, articles yeah articles. Good. all right articles now in in the british english articles are actually part of something we call articles are part of any idea what are they part of adjective yeah articles are adjectives mm -hmm. that means only adjectives do what adjectives define a noun what they define a describe noun describe a noun yeah so that means whenever there's a word and i want to know whether that's an that's a noun or a verb or something else the best way to do is put an a or a the before it for example park can you say a park mm -hmm. yep for example problem can you say the problem yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, why because this is an adjective this is a noun noun Let's look at this one. Oh, sorry. Can I say a oh, beautiful? Yeah. Can I say a oh, beautiful? Hmm. Yeah. A beautiful. I need to add something. If I say a beautiful, does it stand on its own? No. no. You need to add something, right? Yeah. Yeah. What are you adding? A beautiful dress. What is dress? No. No. So that means that a beautiful doesn't stand on its own. Why? Because it's not a no. 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 Got it. Same thing. A park. Are you adding anything to this? I can just say a park. Yeah. Right? Do I need to add something to it? No. 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 Mm -hmm. The problem. Do I need to add anything to it? No. No. Mm -hmm. But if I say a oh, beautiful or the beautiful, I need something to go with it. Right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the beautiful is not a noun. So no. let's look at the other one. Can I say a uh, eat? No. no. Can you say the eat? No. no. Why? Because that's not a noun. Same thing. Let's look <clears throat> at an adverb. Slowly, for example. Can I say a slowly? No. 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 Can I say that slowly? No. 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 All right. Same thing. Why? Because it's not. So the best way to figure out a noun is, if you knew, look at a word, put a or the before it to look at it. So for example, river. Can I say a river? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, opposition. Can I say an opposition? No. Yeah. Opponent. Add. Can I say an opponent? An opponent. Yep, an opponent. Can I say that? Yep. There you go. Those are yeah. nouns. Got it? Yeah. So that's the easy way to figure out a noun. For the easy way to figure out a verb would be verb has tenses, right? Because verb is the one that determines your sentence sentences tense or tone is it past present or future all right so that means a verb can be ed ing or es okay so generally if the word i can use an ing to that word that means generally that is a verb for example run can i say running mm -hmm. bring can i say bringing mm -hmm. Problem. Can I say probleming? Beautiful. Mm. Can you say beauty fooling? Nope. Yeah. Yes, yes, you can. Then you're fooling yourself. Right? Can you say beauty fooling? Nope. No. All right. Nah. So generally, if the word can be put an ing at the end, generally that means it's a verb. But there are other ways to figure that out. Right. Now, those so far. The way we have determined words is by looking at a or ing, you know. But these are words that we know. 
right? Like, for example, I know problem. I know the, what problem means. I know lake. I know river, what they mean. What if I come across a word that I don't understand? So, for example, suppose this one, oblivion. Why do we know what oblivion means? It's like destruction. Oh. So if it's a destruction, what would that part be? It's describing something, right? It would be an adjective, yeah. right? Okay. No, an oblivion is not a destruction. It means abyss. Any idea what an abyss is? No. Hmm? It basically means... No, a deep play? <laughs> exactly. No end. There's no end to it. All right. So the ocean, okay, the abyss ocean, all right? Oblivion is referring to there's no end to that thing, all right? So this is, oblivion is a noun. Now, how would I know that? All right, oblivion is a noun. Oblivion means a situation or place where there's no end to it, or you're just confused about that. Now, question is that, how do I figure that out? Now, these are words that we don't know. So, have you guys heard of something called suffix and prefix? Yeah. Yep. 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 Suffix, any, what is a prefix? Before. It comes before. Uh, or, what is a suffix then? Comes after. after the word. After, right? So, generally, things like ION are referred to as now. now, can you give me an example other than the one I have written down here because you guys are so smart? <laughs> yeah. Give me an example. Refreshment. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come back to that. Things that end with ION. Oh, ION, okay. Yeah. Construction. What else? Demonstration. What else? Starvation. Anything that ends with shun, right? Nation, yep. publication, admission, right? So those things are, I mean, that means they are noun. Now, suppose I don't understand the word, but I see at the end, it's a noun. Would I be able to, I, I, if I see the word ION, then I know what part of speech that is? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Other thing is double E. Can you give me an example with double E? Trainee. Trainee, good. T. Yep. When you're working, what are you known as? Trainee. When you're working, are you a trainee or employee? Employee. Employee. Oh. Or? employee. Working your training? Yeah, you can say that. Or? Yeah, if you're still starting, you're yeah, getting yeah, trained. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I think you are in that position. That's why you said training, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, or? Employer. 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 Mentor. Okay. Mentor. M-E-N-T. Now, someone said refreshment. Now, remember, E-N-T and M-E-N-T is a bit different. Okay. M-E-N-T and E-N-T are different. So, for example, efficient, how does it end? C-I-E-N-T. E-N-T, e e right? So, generally, E-N-T e are adjectives. M-E-N-T, on the other hand, is a noun. So, can you give me an example? Employment. Employment. Anything else? Deployment. Deployment. Ooh, okay. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Department. Uh, department, yep, yeah, good. Advertisement. Right. Got it? So anything that usually ends with M E N T, they are they are nouns. All right. Now there are obviously exceptions. We're not looking at exceptions. We are looking at the general consensus that general agreement is that things that end with M E N T are considered as noun. All right. Mm -hmm. E R I S T I S M, these are other common nouns. Can you give me an example with ISM. Communism. Communism, right? Any type of uh, nism words, right? Terrorism, individualism, plagiarism, these are all noun. IST words? 
Perfectionist. Perfectionist. Yep. Good. IST generally again. Scientist. Mentalist. All right. These are always now. Clear? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to ask you guys to take pictures of something. I want you guys to kindly take screenshots of the most common ones. Give me a second. New share. All right. Can you guys see this? Yep. Yeah. These are the common noun suffixes. All right. So take pictures of this, please. All right. So here, your con your concern is the suffix. Don't go. Don't worry about the meaning and examples. All right. The examples are just there to for you to understand. All right. But this is what is important. All right. Shun and sun word. Then ship. Um, Nest word, M E N T I T I S T I S M. These are the one most common ones that you're going to come across. Yep. Okay. Understood. Now yep. you will see that some of them also also overlaps with something as adjective. All right. So common ones for adjective are A B L E. AL. Generally, AL for noun is less common because you see that it's refusal, recital, rebuttal. These are very uncommon ones, but AL generally is for noun, uh, is for adjectives. Okay. So for example, if I, if a word is N-A-T-I-O-N, nation, what is it? National. Yeah. But if the word is nation, what part of speech is it? No. A noun because mm -hmm. it's ending with T-I-O-N, right? If it's A-L, national, it becomes an? Adjective. Why? Any idea? What modifies a noun? Adjective. Adjective. So for example, look at over here. If I say R-E-G-I-O-N, what is that? Region. 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 Yep. And that is, what part of speech is that? Noun. 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 But when the minute I say add this becomes a adjective. Got it? Yes. So same thing like that. All right. Ask, able, ICL, IOUS is very common. So anything that has IOUS, generally it's an adjective. All right. Are we clear, guys? Yep. yep. All right. So this will help you if your vocabulary is bad, it'll help you with grammar. Okay. I'll come back to that why. Okay. Now. Let's look at this verb suffixes. These are very common verb suffixes. So eight, generally A-T-E words are considered as verb, all right? E-N, I-F-Y, I-N-G, we already talked about it. I-Z-E-N-E-S, these things are also common ones. All right, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, did you guys take a screenshot of this? this? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yes. so all of this, a noun, adjective, and verb. Done? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. Now, all of you are in Telegram, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you guys are in that group, right? Um, what's the group? The preparation group. Yeah. PD preparation. Yeah, yeah. All of you. I'm just going to share something in there for your... Um, just want you to save that on your note. Okay, let me have a look because I shared that last week, I think. I'm going to share that again. Just um, keep, save that on your um, computer or phone. It will help you again. Or just give me a second. Just check your messages right now. I've forwarded something to you guys. Yeah, adverbs. Yeah, so keep, save that on your, okay, take a screenshot of that or save that. Yeah, thank you. All right, so that shows a list of adverbs. Now adverbs, the adverbs are very easy. Adverbs generally, generally end with L-Y, not with I-Y or T-Y, with L-Y. Am I clear? Yeah. yeah. All right. 
So adverbs generally end with ly, okay? So for example, slow, if I add ly, this is an adverb, okay. Let's have a look at this, N-A-T-I-O-N. Nation. That's a what? What is that? Noun. A noun. This is? Noun. Adjective. Adjective. This is? Adverb. Mm -mm. T-Y was what? Noun. 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 Good. Adverb. Adverb ly generally is an adverb, right? Are we clear? Okay, now we are going to go into something called modifiers, right? And this is the last part of your grammar today. You understand this, everything will become easier, all right? So in in grammar, there are two types of modifiers. One is adjective, one is an adverb. That means whenever they are in your sentence, they are modifying your sentence, okay? Adjectives can modify noun and noun phrases. Adjectives can modify noun and noun phrases. For example, can you give me an adjective to describe a book? Dusty. Dusty book. <clears throat> yep. That's a Noun, adjective, which one is the adjective? Dusty. Dusty, book. Same thing as good morning, right? Good morning. What is the adjective? Good. What is the noun? Morning. Yeah, morning is my noun. Understood. So generally, mm -hmm. adjective's job is to modify a noun. That means if I have a blank and then there's a noun, what would be in this bank blank? Adjective. Adjective. Good. So this is the reason why we are looking at modifiers today. All right? Mm. Understand what and when we will have things in our blanks. All right? Adjectives can also modify something called a noun phrase. All right? We know what our phrase is, right? Mm -hmm. What is a phrase? A group of words. Without what? A verb. Without, Without a word. Word. Remember that a phrase cannot just be a group of words. Suppose a group of words can be she is playing or she plays footy. She reads book, books, right? That's a group of words, but that's not a phrase. That's a sentence. Why? Because mm -hmm. there is a there is a verb. verb. Yeah. Okay. So phrases are those group of words without a verb, without a main verb, okay? Noun phrases are something that contains a noun in that phrase, okay? So if I look at dusty book, does it have a noun? It's a phrase, right? It's two or more words, isn't it? Yep. Yep, it's a phrase. So does it have a noun? Yep. This is called yeah, a noun phrase, all right? An adjective can also modify a noun phrase. How? Oh, dusty book. Uh, okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. So dusty book was my noun phrase. Old is the other adjective that's modifying the noun phrase. All right. Now noun phrases are generally an adjective and a... What? What is a noun phrase? No. An adjective and a... Noun. Now, remember collocations when we were looking at? Mm -hmm. Collocations are drum roll, mostly noun no, phrase. phrase. Ah, okay. Good. So strong coffee. What is the adjective there? Strong. 
Coffee's mine. No. No. Noun. Blonde hair. What is the adjective? Blonde. Blonde. What is hair? Noun. No. Noun phrase. Got it. So hair is a noun, obviously, and adjective. Oh. And you'll see that most of your collocations are adjective and noun. It's a noun phrase. Okay. Is it clear? Yep. Yeah. All right. Next thing. Adverbs. Now, adverbs is the one that's a bit complicated. That's why I've given you that list of adverbs. And now here is just the explanation of adverbs. So adverbs, whenever they're in a sentence, they're again modifying something. Now, adjectives, only purpose of adjective is to modify noun or noun phrases. That means anything related to noun. But adverbs can modify four things. Adverbs can modify verbs. Adverbs can modify an adverb themselves. Adverbs can also modify an adjective. An adverb can modify a sentence. Got it? Adverbs modify how many things, guys? Four. Four. What are there? Verbs. Verbs. Adverbs. Sentence. Sentence. Okay. What part of speech is that? Verb. 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 Right? What is this? Eating is what? Adverb is an adverb modifying yeah. the verb. Good. Got it? Slowly eating or eating slowly, either way. How would you like give an example for adverbs uh, modifying adjective? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I was just like. No, no, I'll come back to that. Okay, but I'm yeah, just gonna yeah. go by the rule. The way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. this is an adverb modifying a verb. Okay. Yeah. An adverb modifying another adverb. So slowly was the adverb, right? Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Slowly was the adverb, right? That's an adverb modifying another adverb. Got it? Mm -hmm. An adverb modifying an adjective. Very over dusty. Got it? Yes, no? Uh, yep. Yep. Or yeah. make your life easier. Let's give you something with them. Extremely. Got it? Because yep. adverbs mostly end with ly. Okay. Old is a. What like is old? Noun? Or old describes an age. Adjective, right? adjective, adjective. Adjective, right? Yeah. And I, can, I, can, I, can I say uh, old? Think about that. No. no. You have to add something, right? An old person. Yeah. An old book. Why? Because old is that? Because if it was a noun, then it would just stand itself, right? It's own. Make sense? Yes. Yes, good. So remember these things, all right? It is extremely important for you to understand this. Why? Because it leads to this next part, all right? So suppose I have a blank. After that, I have a noun. What would go in that noun? No, oh, sorry, what would go in that blank? Adjective. Adjective, right? Yes. Adjective. Yeah. Okay. Suppose I have another blank and there's mm -hmm. a noun. What would go in this blank? This blank, we know it's a what? Adjective. What can go in this blank? Adverb. Adverb. Either an adverb or or what? Look at this. Noun phrase. Yeah. So if this is this a noun phrase, adjective and noun? Uh-huh. Yep. So this can also be an adjective. Adjective, right? Now I have another blank. What will go in this blank? Verb. Verbs. Mm -mm. Verbs not modifying anything. If I have adverb. an adjective here or an adverb here, what can go in this blank? 
article article modifies an adverb does an adjective modify an adverb no nope. extremely uh, uh, adverb so what can modify adverb. an adverb another adverb no. adverb um, and if i have another blank here what can be in Art that blank article mm -mm. again what is this an adverb what can modify an adverb adverb adverb, an adverb. understand so like there's no limit of numbers like yeah, how many there, obviously there look i'm not going to get a sentence with four blanks right yeah, <laughs> yeah. you will only get one but i'm telling i'm giving an understanding of how far you can go okay all right yeah so oh so, do you see this over here adverb adverb adjective noun phrase got it yep generally obviously i won't have this many so if there's a noun and there's a blank here what will be in this blank this is a noun right what is going to be in this blank adjective adjective suppose there is an adjective what will be in this blank what modifies an adjective adverb or adjective adverb all right adverb or generally an adjective does not modify an adjective remember that an adjective will modify a noun phrase yeah oh all right all right so for example dusty book over here is a noun phrase that's why i can say old dusty book mm -hmm. right okay. but suppose good book now that's not a noun phrase it's just an adjective modifying the book if i say old good book you see that sentence is not a bit chalky all right so generally it's a noun phrase that is being modified by the adjective okay mm -hmm. all right so that brings does a noun phrase include like uh, adjective and noun yeah but the noun phrase has to be together right okay like it needs to make sense together if i say the book is good can i say the book is gold or the old? the book is good old no yeah. no right so it needs to be in a noun phrase type so i can say for example the old book is good why because it's modifying what book old book right yeah old book in this time is it a noun phrase yes. yes and that's why this adjective is modifying this too got it yeah but and if i say an adjective is modifying an adjective then i can't say can i say the sentence like this the book is old good can i say that no, no. yeah why because mm -hmm. an adjective doesn't modify an adjective, adjective. it modifies a adverb uh, no noun phrase no right no, 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 noun no. phrase has an adjective and a noun but in here because i don't have a noun i cannot say that adjectives modify an adjective it's wrong yeah understand whereas yeah. for adverbs adverbs can actually modify just adverbs yeah all right is it clear yes okay now let, let's break a few things down okay okay i want you guys to tell me what is this what part of speech is this Oh. Verb. What is this? Adverb. Adverb. What is this adverb doing? Modify the verb. Modifying the verb. Which verb? verb? Debated. Good. What is this? Sorry. 
No. no. Is it? What is it? No. 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 Noun, right? His debate. No. What is this? Sorry. Objective. Objective. It was passionate, right? Passionate. It is describing the. Why is this an objective? What is it describing? No. Do you see no. that? Yeah. Okay. It's describing a noun. Got it. So this is the kind of understanding I want you to have for when you're practicing. Don't worry about exam. When you're practicing, this is the logic that you're going to be applying. It is important. All right. Now we talked about adverbs, modifying verbs, adverbs, adjectives. What about sentence? Now, here are two things here. Okay. And remember that however is an ad adverb. Okay. So just for your convenience sake, usually ever words like moreover, however, um, furthermore, or uh, whatever, these words are generally adverbs, right? So in here, I have two sentences with adverbs. Which one is modifying a sentence? Both are adverbs, by the way, but they're modifying different things. So which one is doing what? Can you tell me? Guys, slowly. There are two sentences here, right? No, don't. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I'm looking at. Uh, it was my bad. Okay. So these two. These two. Don't worry about that. Okay, if I have to pick one, which adverb is modifying a sentence? The first one or the second one? The first one. First one. Okay. okay. How? If I take out this however. Yeah. It will make still is, make. Is this a sentence? Yeah. Everyone, read this. Yeah. Is this a sentence? Yes. Yeah. So the purpose of this, however, is just to modify that modify the sentence. sentence. Yes. If I take out this, however. No, it will not make sense. No. Yeah, it, it will not. But I know that, that however, is an adverb. It's a modifier, so it's modifying something. So what is it modifying? Adjective. Which one? Which is the adjective? Hard. Hard. Why is hard an adjective? Because uh, it describes exam, like exam. a noun. Yeah, Wait, exam is yeah. a noun. How do I know exam is a noun? It's from whatever I taught you today. How do I it's know a exam thing. is a noun? It, it's a thing. It's a, yeah, thing. Mm -hmm. common, common noun. Yeah, but how do I know? Remember something I told you, what's the easiest form of Recognizing a noun? How do I recognize a noun? Should be a thing or a person. Yeah, but what did I say? How to recognize it? Using what? Articles. Articles. Does that have an article before it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the exam. Hard is describing. Exam. Exam is a noun. Hard is an adjective. However, is modifying what? Adjective. Adjective. Good. Understood? Yep. Yep. All right. So the purpose of this is just to make sure you understand this so you know exactly what you're looking for in your blanks. Ooh. Understood? Now, these are, remember, these are very basic things, but these will help me a lot in the exam. All right. Normally, when I have the word, Two, all right? After that, if I have a blank, after the word two, I'll always have the verb in what form? Any idea? Base form. Base form. Base form. What, is the, what does that mean? Base form means what? Present. Simple form. Simple present tense, all right? Present that means no plural, no nothing. 
it's just a simple present tense. Present tense. Yeah. Right. So to go, to eat, to run, to jog, to swim, to love, right? To pray. Okay. Do I say to to jumping, to eating, to going? No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Do I say to eat? Yep. No. Do I say to eat? Do I say to eat? I want to eat today. Oh. No. Yeah. Okay. So after two, there's no exception other than one we'll talk about, right? Generally, there's no exception after the word two. It has to be in the verb in the base form, right? Mm -hmm. What is the exception? When we have a phrasal collocation. Phrasal collocation are collocations that are with an adverb or a verb and a preposition. So, for example, forward to. Now, forward is my verb. Two is a preposition. Those are called generally phrasal collocations, all right? Phrasal adverb collocations. Now, if I have forward to, can I say I look forward to seeing you? Is that correct? If I say I look forward to seeing you, yes. is that correct? Yes, yes. correct. No. Okay. No. That's the only exception because it's a collocation. So forward to is a collocation. So after that, you can have seeing. All right. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to receiving your application. All right. But you can also say, I look forward to receive your application. I look forward to seeing. I look forward to see you. That's okay. But in that case, you can use ing only, only in that case, no other cases. Am I clear? Yes. Yep. Next yes. one. After the word did, verb must be again in what form? Base form. Base form. Base form. Now, this is something I want all of you to live and breathe. All right. Did is a past tense. You cannot add another past tense to it. He did knew about it. No. He did not. He did know about it. He didn't knew about it. He didn't know about it. Am I clear? This is a very yep. common one that I see a lot of you making mistakes with. You can't, not this one. After did, verb doesn't matter what type of sentence it is. Verb will always be in the base form, which is the present tense. Clear? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Did you understood? Yes. Yep. None of you understood anything. Jesus, guys. What did I say? After tea. What, what was the last sentence I asked you guys? Did you understood? Did you understand? Yes. Ah, thank God. All right. <laughs> guys, see, if you can't pick that up, that means something's wrong. And in the exam, you're going to get wrong. Have I made it clear? It can't be, did you understood? You see that how easily you went like, oh yeah, we did, <laughs> right? So, yeah, but this is something you have to, because if it doesn't seem wrong now in the exam, it wouldn't seem wrong as well. So you need to change that thinking straight away, okay? Because mm -hmm. this is how we usually answer in the exam. What do we do? We replace the words and we ask ourselves, does it make sense? Yes, is, is this, is this, is, does it sound right? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And then we move on. So if I said you understood and you think that that sounds right, then you're going to get something wrong in the exam. All right. So be careful with this. Yes. All right. yep. Then whenever we have modal verbs, again, after a modal verb, the verb must be in the base form. What are modal verbs? Any idea what are modal verbs? Yeah, yeah. What are helping modal verbs? verbs? Huh? Helping yeah, close to it's 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 helping verbs, but a different type. Not helping verbs, but yes, in they are like auxiliary verbs. So any clue? <laughs> they are should, would, could, might, might, will, and those ones. Yeah. All right. 
So might, may, would, should, could, can. These things are modal verbs. After modal verb, the verb must be in the place form. You should learn grammar or you should learning grammar? You should learn, learn grammar. grammar. You will learn grammar or you will learning grammar? You will, will, learn. will learn grammar. You will learn grammar or you will learn grammar? You will learn, you will grammar. learn grammar. So be careful with it. Any, anytime you have a modal verb right after that, there's a blank, that verb must be in the base form. Clear? Yeah. Now, generally, if I have B and then, then I have a verb, generally it's in the present continuous tense. You will be learning or learn? Learn. Learn. You'll be learn. Learning. 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 Oh, sorry. You'll be learning. learning. Sorry. Okay. See, with B, it becomes present continuous. So ing. Mm. Clear? So if I see yep. a B and then I have a blank after that, generally it's ing or it can be in past tense. So for example, this should be done. All right? Yep. Okay. I can't mm -hmm. say this should be deed or this should be do. Okay. Is it clear, guys? So yes. generally, after B, it is ing, but in certain cases, it can be in ed or past tense, all right? Got it? Then with been, it's present continuous as well. So this should, um, um, I have been eating or I have been eat? I have been eating. I have been eating. I have been eating. All right. So generally after bin, it's again ing. Sometimes ing. it can be in past participle, all right, when the sentence is a bit different. So for example, I have been eaten. All right. Doesn't mean it's correct grammatically. Okay. All right. But most of the time it's present continuous. The exceptions are past participle. Generally with is and are, helping verbs always. Again, ING is, ING is, right? So he is asleep or he's sleeping? Sleeping. He is sleeping. sleeping. Yeah, got it. Always. With is, these things always are ING, right? All right. Sometimes it can be. Again, sometimes it can be past participle. So this is tied to your lecture. Okay. This is tied to your lecture. So again, sometimes it can be past participle, but most of the time it's present continuous always. Has and have always past participle. This has happened or happened. This has happened. Okay. This has happening? No. 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 All right. This has been? Correct. Happening. This has been happening or happened? This has Happened. been happening. Happening. All right, good. So just be mindful of these things, all right? And if you see this, just remember that first preference is obviously with be present continuous, being present continuous, is and are present continuous, has and have always past participle, all right? And with mm -hmm. do, did, and modal verbs, it's always in base form. Base form. Okay. The other rule is that Whenever, when do we use a by in a sentence? Any idea? Okay. Passive. We use by to make sentence passive sentence. Good. All right. So an active sentence would be I eat fish. What is a passive sentence? By eating fish. fish. Eaten by yep. me. Yes. Fish was, was eaten, eaten by, by me. me. Fish is? Mm -hmm. Fish eaten was. Eaten by me. Or no, is it was or is? I said, I eat fish, right? If I say, I eat fish, is it was or is? Was. Watch. I eat fish. Is it was is. or is? Was. Is. Is. No, was. Was. Is, was, was, was. Mm -mm. If I say, fish was eaten by me, that's <laughs> referring to a past tense, right? I'm changing the tense. If I say, I eat fish, is that present or past? Present. Present, present. right? 
So if I'm changing that sentence into passive, why would I change the tense of the sentence? Why would I say fish was eaten by me? Did I say I was eating fish? No. Nope. No. I said I eat fish. fish. So it's a present sense. So my uh, passive sentence would be fish is eaten by, by me. By. Now, the rule is whenever I use by in a sentence, the noun, because by is a preposition, noun will follow the by, but before the noun, the verb will always be in past participle. Yeah. Okay. So for example, fish is eaten by me. me. By after by, do I have a noun? After me. by, what do I have? Me, yes. me is a pronoun. Yep, it's a noun. Yeah. Right. And before by, do I have a verb? Fish is eaten, eaten by me. Yeah. Is, do I have a verb? Yes, eaten. Yes. And is that verb in past participle? Yep. Eat yeah. Yeah. And that's Eat always it. the rule. Okay. So whenever I have a I have a passive sentence, what does a passive sentence mean, by the way? Passive sentence means where the doer becomes the receiver. All right. So for example, when I say I eat fish, who's the subject? I. 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 I'm the doer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But if it's uh, if I it's a passive sentence, what happens? Fish is eaten by me. me. The subject is becoming the receiver, whereas the object is becoming the doer. Subject. doer. Okay. Got it? Yep. yep. So that's what we refer to as a passive sentence. Generally, we use by to make it. After by, we'll need to have a pronoun or a noun. And before that, I will have a pepper. Uh, sorry, I'll have a verb in the past participle. Got it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's, do an, let's do an exercise. What is the passive sentence of that? The books. Books yeah. are liked by me. Are liked by, by me. Uh -uh. Liked is a past tense. What is a past participle? I can't. Okay. It must be a past participle, right? Now, certain words, the past participle and the past tense is the same. Can you give me an example? All right. What is the past tense of run? Run. run. What run. is the past participle of run? Ran. Ran. Yeah, got it. So in that case, both are same, right? So if I have, for example, um, eat, what is the past participle of eat? Eaten. Eaten. What is the past tense of eat? Eat. eat. Got it, got it, right? So some words which are called irregular verbs they generally don't have three forms. They have only two. Okay. So, for example, run is an example. All right. The other example will be. Um, cut. Mm, mm, yes, yeah, sorry. Like cut. Yeah. All right. So, those are a few things. Okay. So, be careful of that. Now, the other last thing is generally. Okay after a possessive word. You know, any idea what is a possessive word? My. Yep. My. These are called possessive words. Generally, after these, what will I have okay. if I have a possessive word? Give me a sentence with his. Mm. 
his book is new so after his what do we have now now uh, always a uh, noun okay so after any possessive word it will always be a noun so if i say my dash is stolen what should be in that dash wallet noun. noun right so it can be wallet book Bag. or bags any of that oh. right shit got it all right yep the other thing over here is something called parallelism what is parallelism generally if i'm connecting two blanks with the word and both must have the same form and the same type so for example if i say drink and drive if i say drinking and driving driving, driving. okay drunk and what drop. is the drunk and drop drunk and driven drunk and driven driven all right so be careful all right so whenever we i'm connecting two things so suppose there is a there's a word here it says schools and dash in my option there is university and another one is universities which one will go here universities universities yeah it's called parallelism okay so the blank will follow the word before it and the form of it as well understood mm mm-hmm. mhm all right yeah. last thing whenever i see an before a blank what will be in that blank the sentence the word will start with what a e i o u absolutely so that means any other no. word other than a e i o u will i even look at them no mm, no nope. need right because i know it's an and so there must be a word with a e i o u got it